Good evening, everyone. I hope you are doing well. This is Bianca Pabotoy, Project Officer at the Center for Peace Education, and you're tuning in to MCTV's very own Noder. For this episode, we'll talk about the Center for Peace Education, Miriam College, or CPE. CPE is one of Miriam College's three advocacy centers, and the center promotes the building of a culture of peace through its education, advocacy, women and youth organizing, and networking programs. Within MC, CPE practices a whole school approach. Um, this is a good organizing framework in doing peace education. This means that the school attempts to infuse the ideas, perspectives, and values of peace into the various aspects of the school's life. Outside Miram College, CPE engages with as many actors as possible horizontally with other peace groups, community members to community members, peers to peers, and vertically those in decision-making positions such as government agencies to enhance the impact of CPE's work. Thus, the CPE is into advocacy specifically on arms control and disarmament, support for the peace processes in the Philippines, and women and youth's participation in peace and security. As a student in MC, I felt the whole school approach, which I mentioned, um, within the MC community. You know, MC's call for us to be women leaders in service, um, grounded by our core values of truth, peace, justice, and integrity of creation, was something I felt so strongly. Because when I was in college, that was when that was the time na namulat ako to the issues happening within our country, and to really asking myself like. What is it that I can do for the Philippines? And my answer came by learning more about our advocacy centers in school on women, on the environment, and on peace. CPE's campaign and advocacy on youth and women in peace and security really resonated with me. So I've grown from being a volunteer to the office to be becoming an officer in Pax Christi Miriam College, you know, our school's peace organization and to eventually becoming employed almost three years now in the office. And honestly, it's been one of the most nurturing and challenging and amazing professional experiences I could ever ask. Actually, we have a lot of exciting projects that are currently happening, and that ranges from peaceful families, interfaith work, gender and disarmament, women, peace and security, and youth, peace and security. So allow me to share some of these. It'll be a bit of a sharing time, medyo marami siya, pero I think you will really enjoy what we do. And I think you'll be amazed by what our school is able to do through the advocacy centers. So on peaceful families, this I would say would be the most, um, I would say popular one, kasi medyo obvious siya, and it's a, a recurring kind of output that we give out um, as a, an office. So CPE with Miriam College's Family Studies Program launched Our Peaceful Classroom. It's an online space where parents, educators, and other professionals come together to talk about ideas on how to promote positivity and peace within ourselves, our families, and our communities. So since the quarantine in 2020, a good number of Our Peaceful Classroom video blogs, so parang vlogs talaga siya, have been posted and are up for viewing if you guys want to watch on the MC Family Studies YouTube account. So it's MC Family Studies. Our other project um, on interfaith work, which has been quite, uh, it's been a long time project of the center um, because CPE also works to challenge prejudice and build tolerance, especially in a multicultural and multi-religious society like the Philippines. So our religious plural society, like Southeast Asia is home to believers of Islam, Buddhism, Christianity, tribal religions, and so many more. And this diversity actually continues to be used as a reason to mobilize people, to ask people to come together toward rivalry and even violence. So this is a significant challenge up to this day. And so it is within this context that CPE created its twinning project, which seeks to enable the Muslim and Christian youth student participants to develop skills, attitudes, and actions that are peace-oriented 
particularly those that break down the barriers of prejudice between them. Um, on gender and disarmament, um, a major component of peace building is securing safe spaces and dismantling tools that actually promote violence. So the illicit trade of arms or the illegal trade of arms and proliferation, the spread of loose firearms and weapons continue to be a key issue of peace and security in the Philippines. So the supply of guns allows for the formation of private armed groups, which enable political dynasties, drug lords to perpetuate themselves in power. And so CPE gives importance to this armament education to challenge militarism and prevent armed conflict and armed violence. Because this armament education seeks to be a countervailing force against the dominant militarized mindset that has made governments and people rely on the possession of more and more sophisticated weaponry rather than investing their resources on the fulfillment of basic human needs and on the development and promotion of nonviolent alternatives and processes. And I think during the COVID-19, we felt this because our we felt um, the gaps in our healthcare system, which has been continually underfunded for how many years. And so CPE is an active member of international coalitions working on arms control and disarmament. It takes part in meetings at the UN in Geneva and New York, and with civil society groups around the world to advocate for the Arms Trade Treaty, the UN Program of Action on Small Arms and Light Weapons, and the Treaty for the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. On Women, Peace and Security, so um, the passage of United Nations Security Council 1325, going a bit legal over here, um, the Women, Peace and Security Agenda in the year 2000 reaffirmed the indispensable role of women in the matters of conflict resolution, peace building, peacekeeping, among other peace efforts. In Asia, the Philippines was one of the pioneer countries to create a national action plan on this agenda. Um, the CPE co-initiated the formulation and adoption of the first Philippine National Action Plan, or NAP as we call it, on women peace security with other key civil society partners in the country. It worked with government agencies and women in peace organizations throughout the country to develop this NAP. And this is meant actually, so what does the NAP do? Well, the NAP is meant to increase women's participation in decision-making processes that relate to conflict prevention, conflict resolution, peacekeeping, and peace building. Because surprise, surprise, and in this field of work on peacekeeping, peace building, women, there is no doubt about consultations. Women are for sure consulted. But when it comes to a higher level position, when it comes to a decision-making level position, women are often at the sidelines to all of this. And so, the NAP is a push to ensure that women are on the table and can make a decision. And CPE continues its work with women on the ground until today. So in 2019, a nationwide training for women, um, for women's peacekeeping with CPE's long-standing partners had been conducted in four provinces across the country through the program, the Women's Agency in Keeping the Peace, Promoting Security, or WePeace for short. This is the project that I am coordinating. Very proud of it. And these training sessions reach 83 community women leaders from four distinct communities addressing four different conflict lines. So may pa travel tayo guys. Um, we address one clan wars locally called Rido in Alyosa, North Patabato, Central Mindanao. Uh, internal displacement in Surigao del Sur. Uh, tribal wars in Tabuk City, Kalinga and development aggression in the form of development projects that violate uh, indigenous people's rights in Infanta, Quezon province. Last year, we produced um, a full-length documentary on peace. And if you guys are interested, just let me know, reach out to CP, and we'd be happy to screen that documentary for you, produced by MC Communications Alumni, of course. <laughs> and on Youth, Peace, and Security, CPE has always championed giving young people, especially young women, the space to participate in peace building efforts and campaigns. And I am one of those recipients among so many more MC students. Um, peace education does not only mean kasi learning within the confines of a classroom. Peace education involves empowering young people to express their ideas and find cooperation with different leaders in society and, and amongst each other in order to eliminate 
uh, violence and build sustainable peace in our individual lives, our communities, and our societies. Um, CPE was the implementing partner of the Young Women Leaders for Peace in the Philippines. This is actually in support of the Youth Peace and Security Agenda of un the United Nations Security Council. And um, uh, Young Women Leaders for Peace is a project under the Global Network of Women Peace Builders, uh, an international uh, organization which helps young women and girls gain the skills and build confidence to become leaders in, this, um, in, in their communities. CPA's theory of change is that reduction of violence and a culture of peace can be achieved when people develop the will to address local and global problems and that they have the skills to resolve conflicts and work collaboratively, non-violently for justice, equality, and human dignity. So therefore, the greatest resource for peace building are the people themselves. For it is through them that peaceful relationships and structures are created. So our roles in society is actually very, very important. And educating people toward becoming peace agents is central to the task of peace building. Peace education, or an education that promotes a culture of peace, is an important peace building strategy. Because peace education cultivates the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values that seek to transform people's mindsets attitudes and behaviors that in the first place have either created or exacerbated the conflict. Hence, peace education is a critical response to both the challenge of preventing violent conflict and challenge of post-conflict peace building. It is so important that we stay critical. We don't blindly accept things for what they are and you know we, that we have to keep questioning what more we can do. Because again, our roles in society is actually very important. We're all a great influence to somebody else. And by questioning, this is actually how society progresses. When we challenge the status quo. And this does not mean taking things on violently. Because the foundation to anything is very important. So if you try to build something, if you want to introduce change, but you do it through violence, that will not be sustainable, it will not last because it will only birth another conflict. I think we have to all remember that we can be critical, we can question, and we can still be for peace. It's not an either-or situation over here. We're actually, we're, humans are capable of um, thinking more than one thing at one time. So don't get carried away by that belief that if you're critical, you're, you're against for something already. Actually, you can be critical because you want something to improve and progress. And that is very important. So in 10 years, where will I be? Where will we all be? I hope to keep working in this field, hopefully working with more MC students who will have graduated by that time. Um, and who will be in the peace building field. It's amazing how I get to meet a lot of MC alumni um, doing good work, not just in the Philippines, but all over the world. And it makes me very proud, hashtag MC Pride. So I hope to see you guys, if you're watching this, help you see each other in the field in 10 years time. And uh, right now, our work involves a lot of awareness raising on women, youth, their participation. But in 10 years, I hope I don't work on awareness raising anymore, but instead work on how we can change already the political and societal structures or how we can improve if that's already been changed by then to ensure that more women and young people can readily engage in key issues of society building. I hope by that time, it won't be questioned anymore. Um, automatic na na. Where, where is the woman? Well, where, bakit lalaki lang lahat? Where is the woman representative? I hope more peace agreements and peace negotiations are like that because right now it's it's really not. Um, and personally, I I I am very on on all the programs that I've been sharing um, on uh, from CPE. My favorite is arms control and disarmament work. It's such a, an interesting field and. Um, there are a lot of women in this field, but they're mostly from abroad, not much in the Philippines. So 
I hope to work in that specific field on peace building. And I know through CPE's strong push for gender, obviously, as you can see, naman, de ba? Um, I think the I think the office has proven how um, how much of an advocate they are for gender in um, arms control and disarmament issues. I hope that in a decade, the Philippines can be the champion of um, gender and disarmament. Hopefully within the ASEAN, but I think even beyond the ASEAN and the global stage. Last but not the least, I I hope that you guys learned a lot from our sharing. I've only um, touched the tip of the iceberg of CPE's peace building work, um, but more importantly, I think it's a really the, our advocacy centers in MC are actually doing a lot of really good work in the field. So I hope you guys try to check us all out, not just CPE. So. Please, please do check us out if you're interested to learn more about our work. Follow CPE on our socials as well, Bloggerian. We're on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash CPE Miram College. We're on Twitter, it's at CPE under MC. And if you want to check out our research outputs, like if you have a, I don't know, a paper, or if you want to go more academic on our work, we have a lot of that also. Um, it's at mc.edu.ph slash CPE. And of course, you know, this episode would not have been possible without MCPP. So thank you guys for um, this opportunity. Please don't forget to follow them on their socials. So it's uh, Miriam College Television on Facebook. It's at Miriam College Television on Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to their YouTube channel. <laughs> and so guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me in the second episode of Noler. I hope you learned a lot and more importantly, had fun. And always remember, if you know, tell Noler. We hope to see you again for episode 3. Bye! Here in MCTV, we got you covered.